Hello and welcome, I'm the Emperor and this is Crusader Kings 3. We're playing live over on Twitch, but of course we're uploading to YouTube as well because we want you to be able to learn this game just as much as people over on Twitch. And if you want to join over on Twitch, well, that's your absolute opportunity. Come there and ask your questions, get them answered and help get over those mental knots that might keep you from succeeding in Crusader Kings 3. And I believe that you can play this game. I can, so you can. Now, we're not going for min-maxing in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I play the way I understand it, and it's necessarily definitely not optimized. Um, it's how I enjoy playing, and that's good enough. We are playing currently in 867, so very early. And we're playing as Shaikh Rostam Karin Zaid. Or Karin Zade, and we got this event pop up. So, general rule of thumb if you don't know what to pick, just look at what has the most green text in the options in the tooltip when you hover over it. And you want to avoid the things that give you a lot of stress. Now, I don't know this event chain in particular because I've not played the Iranian Intermezzo as a thing in this game yet. So, it is best to ensure that uh, we read what's going on if we don't know an event yet. So I will do just that. If I know an event, I might just kind of pick the option, especially if there's only one option, I might just click through it, depending on what else is going on. So the Eastern Frontier has long been a refuge of heathens and strange sects, yet in Samara, the Caliph al Mu'taz has grown increasingly concerned about this. We have heard about Afridunists and the Shaikhdom of Mazandaran who par practice bizarre rituals. The Caliph, the Caliphal envoy Iskander pauses as if gathering courage before he continues in a low scandalized voice. Some even speak of rituals of a carnal nature. Enough is enough. The Caliph wants you to deal with the miscreants. So I can be like, okay, I'm going to make an example of them. Uh, we get a bunch of things, like we get 20 dread, which means people are going to be a little bit afraid of us. Uh, keeping them away from joining factions or plotting against us. And our dread DK will also... Good evening, Ahsoka. Welcome back. So lovely to have you here. Let me bring up chat, since chat's happening now. How are you doing tonight? Hope you're doing very well. Uh, right, so we got the fearsome example thing here. Dread gain per turn goes up, uh, but it will cause us a lot of stress because we are kind of just. Uh, let's see, the scripture in the proper language will show them the way. So we are attempting more of a of a diplomatic approach, but it costs us 50 gold, which we don't have all that much of yet, but we would get plus one learning, and different culture opinion goes up, but same culture opinion goes down, which is kind of odd because, you know... Why would the Arabs be annoyed with promoting Arabic? Uh, how are we doing? We're doing we're doing fine. We just started like, seconds ago. So this is exactly where we left off last stream. And I believe you were there as well. So we're just continuing on there, seeing what's happening. Let's see. Alas, I have more urgent concern. We can just kind of ignore the Caliph and be like, eh, you know, eh, it's going to cause us stress. It's going to lose us some piety. Which is this little crescent moon symbol over here? If you were a different culture, a different religion, it wouldn't would be like a cross, for example. We lose some stress, we gain some stress, uh, and the caliph caliph will uh, kind of dislike us. Now I'm not I'm not super willing. I'm not super willing. I should ask to be put on our religious council. Sure, sure. Um, but I'm not super willing to, to spend money here, so I'm gonna go with the slight stress option and lose a little bit of piety. I mean, a lot of piety, but I'd rather lose that than anything else. So before we try and get on our leisure's council, we need to complete our council. There is a counselor missing, so we're gonna go with, um, who's decent? They're all kind of bad. So we're gonna put this guy who's the least terrible the one that has the highest number in the thing basically and we have a liege so so we are vassal to the Zaid Emirate and we can ask to be put on the council unless we are already there 
I should marry off my courtiers. Yes, very good. Um, so let's let's just check all the options that we have because honestly, we haven't really uh, done much as a vassal on this channel. Usually, we get independent qu pretty quick, and then that's kind of that. So um, let's see. We could declare ourselves regent. We could start some factions here. Uh, we could claim the throne as a scheme. I don't think we've ever done that. But that's actually a pretty high chance. It gains us a lot of stress because we are just, and that is to us an unjust action. But just three years? I mean, that's pretty good. Um, Ahsoka, why, why would I matrilineally marriage my courtiers' males to females? Because that would send them away from my court to the court where the woman is. So that would be bad for us. We want our courtiers to stay. Oh, if the courtiers are female. Yes, sure. Then it needs to be matrilineal. So potential mates come to our court and fill our court with options. So I think we're just going to start the claim throne scheme because we're looking to become a duke. And this is one of the better options we have right now. So we're just going to start this. And it's 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 a stressful situation we're in. So we can check over here in our um, decisions thing on the F8 on the keyboard. Um, if maybe we can do something. No, we cannot. But we have a secret faith. Interesting. So we are Ashari. But what is our secret faith? Our secret faith is... Great, it only says revert uh, to your previous faith, but it doesn't tell us what our previous faith was. Thank you, game. I mean, Crusader Kings is one of the games where I'm really, really happy with the explanations and the text and tooltips, but holy heck, that is not helpful. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, there are some things which we can try and do to relieve our stress, but right now we might be okay, so instead what we're gonna do is we're going to follow Azoka's um, suggestions. For example, we can check our father, as you say, and see what their faith might have been, but they have been a Shari as well. So, um, And since we don't have a mother at the start of the game, so uh, I don't think we actually can see it. So we are a detractor of the Caliphate. We, we could search for a new religion and all that. But supporters of Caliphal authority don't like us as well. It's a very interesting place down here. Very uh, Lots of th new things that I don't really see so much. Alright, you wanted us to marry off our courtiers. Now, why would I want to do that? Let me explain that real quick. Um, our courtiers, which we will find here under F5 and then your courtiers, uh, are the people that are in our court. And to fill our ranks with knights, to fill our ranks with counselors, to have a pick from court physicians, all that kind of stuff. We need people in our court who can do all these things. And having our courtiers married will bring the spouses into our court, if we manage it correctly, which we'll show in a moment. Um, and it will generate more courtiers because they will have children and these children will stay in a court and then next generation um, public servants will be generated basically. So let's check through anyone who is not a guest. We don't care about guests at this point. Uh, for example, our half-brother, he's betrothed or good. She's married. Uh, that might actually be our wife. Yes, our wife. So the children don't matter too much. So this guy here, he is not married. Um, and we're gonna bring him in a wife. Ideally, someone a little bit younger, so there's a good chance of some children in there. I don't mind too much what's it's gonna be. I don't really care so much about optimizing this, so we're just gonna pull in a lady and uh, be happy. Now, with women, you want to do it a little bit differently. When you find spouse, you need to check matrilineal, because if you do not do that, the men they marry, uh, your courtier will join their court and leave yours, so... You lose the girl and you don't get the guy. For men, we are looking primarily for a fairly young age and some good martial skill, which is ideally related to a high prowess skill. Like this guy, he's perfect. He has a 
He has a cautious leader skill, so he's a good general. He has high prowess, high martial. He's a little bit old from my uh, my ideals, and he's brave, so he's easy uh, to kill in battle, but uh, that's a good start anyway. So we don't have all that many courtiers, but you can see we have a bunch uh, to fill in here. So what we could do with women, check for high intrigue skill, because they can serve as your spy master, mistress rather. So that's an option um, early on. But yeah, again, I don't care too much, so we're just going to get someone halfway young, so they have a good chance of having children, and don't mind too much about the skills there. Um, so maybe our grandfather religion, you say? Uh, our grandfather... Oh yeah, that, that's probably it. Our grandfather was uh, Mazda Yazna, so that is probably the faith we could convert back to. But we consider them evil, and they consider us hostile, so if we convert to this faith then we will immediately open ourselves up for holy warring left and right, so we're definitely not going to do that. Uh, we learned our lessons in our uh, Ireland Alba playthrough, so that's for sure not a thing that we want to do at all. So we have started our Claim the Throne scheme. Let's explore this down here. Like, we haven't looked at this yet. I don't know exactly what goes on in this, so I think that's kind of kind of interesting to have a look at. So, Iranian Intermezzo. This is in this area, in this highlighted area here, all this orange and blue stuff. Um, I think these are the different factions, kind of, or something. <laughs> Let's see. So, we are in the current phase, unrest. So, stuff is kind of, you know, bad. And these are the effects that we get out of it. Not too important. We use struggle endings. Uh, we cannot end the struggle, but we could look at, at potential endings here. So, uh, the Abbasid are humiliated, the Caliphate is renewed, or uh, there's an Iranian resurgence. Um, that is only if we get... I don't know. Ending, struggle, unrest in the area. All ending phases in the struggle, concession, all struggle, ending decisions. I don't... Oh, okay, we have to select it. No. <laughs> ah. Interesting. So... Checking these changes the list down here. This is a struggle ending. Whereas this towards... Okay. So if... If this happens, then the struggle is over. But is it just the current phase? Or is it... Then like the whole Iranian intermezzo is over. You don't know either? Yeah, okay, we're gonna find out, but I think that's that's perfectly fine. So, the Sunni Caliph dies violently, gives plus 25 to Concession. Concession is one of the phases in the Iranian intermezzo. Let's read the tooltip, we learn it a little bit. Over time, as tension in Persia calmed down, and both supporters and detractors of the Caliphate tire of constant bloodshed, the Iranian intermezzo might come to an end mutually, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Reaching 500 progress score towards this ending phase will automatically apply the relevant effects and the and the end of the Iranian intermezzo. Yes, so if we reach 500 concession, the Iranian intermezzo is over. So only if we go into stabilization, only then the tension might spiral into unrest, which would mean more chaos to come. Okay. All right. So these are the various things. And you can contribute. You can try and build towards one of these with the actions uh, down here. And I think this is just a counter of how often this has happened. So a detractor of the Caliphate ruler has been converted four times. A detractor of the Caliphate ruler has been imprisoned one time. Now, we are a detractor of the Caliphate. So our goal would be to throw this into... Into ruin, basically. I think it's a little bit like these social uh, social games, like um, Town of Salem, like that. So we have some factions. Okay, so the Caliph dies violently. We could just plot to kill him and contribute twenty five points here. Yearly drift, either the Sunni Caliphate or the Arabian Empire destroyed. The holder of the Sunni Caliphate or the Arabian Empire loses civil war. 
All right, okay, so there's a lot of things that are just go slowly going to occur it. I don't think we really need to work on toward anything here, but we should probably be halfway aware of these effects here because things might change and we are not going to understand it or I'm not going to understand it and then I need to check what the phase effects are. Okay, all right. Good, 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 good. So I want to push this here. We have a success chance of 82% and a secrecy of 92%. What we can do is we could put our spy mistress or our spy master to support our schemes, which will increase the scheme power and the hostile scheme success chance will be increased. No, uh, wait, no. Our scheme power increases, whereas enemy uh, schemes will take longer. Basically, hostile scheme power plus 22 time, whereas our hostile scheme success chance goes up plus 11. So we will we'll pick this and we'll see now that this year has gone up to 90% and 95%. So it's a good thing. We want this. We want this to uh, go. And we're getting some marriage proposal acceptance from the courtiers that we have just started to marry off there. Right. Okay, so at this point, we could just sit around and wait a little bit, or we check what else we can do, militarily speaking. Learning on the job. It would be appear that my brother Sokab has been performing exceptionally well lately. Oh, very good. And so opportunity has presented itself, allowing me to greatly guide and influence his work for the foreseeable future. Perhaps this is an opportunity for him to further enhance his skills. Hmm. So we could go and attend the needs of the people and speak favorably of me as you travel, which gives us some renown and us some prestige. But I'd rather improve our counselor. I mean, every taxpayer gets a gets a potential of giving us 15 opinion. Honestly, we need to check that out because that's different from um, yeah, that's different from feudal as well because we have tax jurisdictions. And we need to basically assign taxpayers. And our half-brother here is in charge of one of those tax jurisdictions. And only if we do that do we even get anything out of them. We can have only one tax collector at the moment. Uh, but he can manage 12 taxpayers. So that's not a problem. Let's check up here what wars we can declare. There's one that is very obvious. Because it's a, against a very weak foe. But it's up there. <laughs> So, now let's consider this. This is right there on the Khazaria's nose. So, the horse lords, the Mongols, they might feel like, no, 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 we would like to have that. But we could fight this. But then we are, again, kind of surrounded by other people, and I'm not so sure if that is a great idea. But it's literally the only war that we can afford to fight in terms of manpower. So, this is one we can do which we can win, but we can't start it because we just lost a lot of faith making the choices that we made, so we have to wait pretty much anyway. And that's also part of the game. You wait quite a bit. Eventually, events are going to pop up, so the waiting kind of stops. Uh, we don't need the information on the tax jurisdiction. We just kind of did that, but of course, we're going to follow it along very nicely. And it tells us up here, we got the information on how many tax collectors we have, what the contribution is. And we have the jurisdictions with their people assigned and the tax decrees, which we could um, increase, decrease, whatever. But I don't really think that makes sense at the current point. Like we get almost nothing increasing that, changing that, whatever. Is potentially only going to upset people and it's not going to give us anything. So we're just going to leave it at basic taxes right now. And keep it as it is. Alright. Now something we like to do on this stream is ask our players, our watchers, our viewers how their campaigns are doing. So Azoka, are you are you in a campaign currently? Is it is it going well? Let's see. Not to worry, my liege, I will take care of this as well. Oh boy, okay, we could increase our scheme success chance. By 20%, which would put us over 100%. It won't, but it's going to push us to uh, 90 something percent. 98, I think, is the maximum. I'm currently playing in Sardinia. Very good. 
Uh, but it's gonna give us critical stress. We're already at the cusp of going into the first stress level. Which is a little bit dangerous, but not too bad yet. So we're just gonna take this. Uh, because I would like to get the 20% boost there. And now we're overwhelmed by stress. This will give us this event here. Which gives us some options of dealing with stress. So we could gain the trait Improvident. Max is 90%, are you sure? Max is 90%, probably. Um, Alright. So... I don't mind too much. <laughs> because... The maximum how it's calculated, we're going to look at that in a moment. We're building a buffer against unforeseen events. So even if 90% is max, we, we are building a buffer. Uh, we'll, we'll show that in a second. But for now, we are now over the stress limit here. We're at stress level 1. And that is getting bad. Our fertility is minus 10%. Because we're stressed, you, 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 don't, you don't have that many kids if you're stressed. Or you don't do the things you need to do to have children when you're stressed because your mind is elsewhere, of course. So we can choose from three options, really. We could become something, indulge in something. For example, we could become improvident, which I think is horrible. I never really take this, ever, uh, because it's super costly. Early on and later, it doesn't really matter. And we got the Hashashia option, which decreases our stewardship and our leadership, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with. It's gonna lose us a little bit of stress. Uh, yes, we 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 can do. We can ride the green dragon. We we can, we can smoke the peace pipe and all these kind of things. Or we could get more stress, and even more stress if until in five years we haven't reduced our stress, things go bad. So in this case, we're gonna take the Hashashia trait because now out here we got a new option. We can now go ahead and consume hashish cakes. Nom nom nom. We will fall into hashish stupor, which will decrease our skills even further, which are already fairly low. So stewardship and this is you know, uh, it's not great because our our senses are dull, our mind is muddled from uh, the vapors and the you know. But we lose some stress. And we definitely do want to lose more stress, so bring me a platter of platter of those cakes here. It's not very strong. Like, the stress loss we get here is not very high. It's just barely enough to get out of that stress level. Barely. So maybe it's not even worth it. Honestly, the, the, the penalties are pretty high. But Improvident is not a good choice, and the other choice is also not a choice, because we don't really have anything we can do to reduce stress further. Because the other thing that we could try to do is we could go ahead and, if I just can find that, we can make a decision. No. Activities, F9. We could try Hold the Feast, where we can lose some stress. But, if we look at that, uh, having a feast is actually very affordable at the moment still. You know what, let's, let's have a feast with 90, uh, 39 gold baseline. We could reduce this a little bit more, but I would like to get some prestige out of it as well, so it's fine. And we can get an honorary guest. Um, ideally, one of our strong vassals who kind of hates us. And our goal is recreation. He will just have a better opinion of us at the end. So that's what the honored guest will help us to do. You say just do a hunt or something. I mean, a hunt or something is also a feast or something. The hunt is, is greater in giving you prestige. But it also relieves your stress. The feast is great for relieving stress, unless you are shy or paranoid. Um, and it gives you a little prestige. So it's kind of like, you know, if you need prestige, you go more for a hunt. If you need more relaxation, you have a feast. So we're going to go with the feast. But both cost money and it's, it's definitely something to consider. All right. And another thing we wanted to check, what I wanted to talk about is the scheme power. So if we look at this here right now. Uh, some of these things might change in here. Hunt can also give you an artifact. A very good point. It can. Uh, I don't think feasts can. So, let's see. Um, the things that contribute here are Claim Throne plus 20%, Spy Master Espionage plus 11%, and Claim Throne plus 20%. That is basically the thing that we chose, I think. So, if something here falls away with plus 20%, then we have a little bit of a buffer. And since we are on the council, we get plus 25 as it is, so. Interestingly enough, our learning... 
Doesn't seem to calculate new. Alright. Unrest other. Yeah, the unrest other, I think, is just from the Iranian intermezzo. Because we're in the in the unrest phase here. That's that. So we're not going to wage war, I don't think. Though we really should, shouldn't we? Ah, you know what? But we can't even hold it, so it doesn't really make sense for us. We can't hold it. We would have to give it away, and since we are a count, giving away a county title puts it around, out of our realm. Our boy has become curious. Good stuff. What about among vassals? What do you mean? Silver tongue is shining today. Okay, this guy is trying to sway us, so we get some opinions here. Let's remove these, it's all fine. Do you want to know about his vassals? Or I mean everyone hates him. <laughs> if that was your question. <laughs> Welcome, friends. So again, we're just going to go with what gives us the most green options. But all of these are green, all of these are good. But we are here for stress relief. We are currently at 99. So I know there are more stress relief options coming down the line in this event chain. So we're not going to start with the 80, which I might regret. Uh, but instead, we're going to go with the minus 12 stress and the plus 20 for everyone who's here. So everyone will like us a little better. We lose a little bit of stress, but not all the stress in the world. But it's a huge impact out of these feasts, as you can say. All right. We get better safe than sorry for five years. Defend advantage in for plus 10. Okay. Get some martial lifestyle experience. Because... Um, in the middle of the celebrations, I am more intrigued by the defensibility of this hall. Should an attack be launched from the outside, right this moment, the lower nobility would be the ones in immediate danger. Beyond that, a small bastion could be made from the great tables, offering a modicum, modicum of protection. Now, how would we have a stage a counterattack? All right. So this just goes into our martial lifestyle experience. It's kind of nice. And, oh boy, what's happening here? Plate after plate of food is brought into the Great Hall. An unmistakable smell reaches me and I smile. That my faithful vassal is sensitive to almond is something I sadly forgot to tell the cook. I bid you all welcome and I pray you will find the food to your liking. His face, I save him from the food is definitely to my liking. So, we could f start forming a rivalry here. I don't really need that. So, we're just going to go with getting the... We cook on, on the lad and gaining some prestige because we saved him with our valiant efforts. A snake revealed. Oh no, that's not good. Finally, I've uncovered the truth. The cold-blooded bamp pot behind my brother Sokup's early demise was none other than the... Alright, okay. So we know who killed our brother. Alright. Fine. Uh, what do we have here? What have you done? Everyone will know of your crime. Of course we... Our brother? That's our heir, isn't he? Well, that was our backup heir. <laughs> uh, so, of course, we will reveal him as the murderer. Look at him! He's winking the fiend. Or we could be like, okay, give me money. For 15 gold, I'll keep your secret. No, 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 no. He is exposed. And we can't imprison him right now. We'll figure out why not. So we get raucous entertainment for five years. It's not really an option, but we get some medium health boost. So that's nice. And we're back being overwhelmed by stress because... Why? Well, our brother just died. Now we have a few options here and we'll make a toast to this guy who I fear... Is he the murderer? No, he's not the murderer. They just kind of look alike. And now I have a toast to Vali Valash, Giving him some prestige and opinion and all that. All good stuff. And we should... Yeah, lose another 24 stress on this. We should have taken the 80 stress early. We should have taken that for sure. I, But I couldn't know that my brother would die. 
I like that was impossible for me to know. So we're just gonna take what we get. Uh, we start getting the Eget Reveler trait, which is something that you build up through. There are some ranks here, you can see down one and two. That's very good. And we get a bunch of good modifiers, so we just take it and be happy that our brother died on the feast. And okay. After days and nights of joyous company, my feast is soon going to be over. Most guests seem to be pleased, except perhaps Hamdam, who is clutching her nose where a peacock marked her. Also seems no, no one wishes to sit close to Elnaz after a brutal disposal of the bird. And we should do that more often. So that is the most remarkable thing that happened at our feast where our brother died. Someone got beat up by a peacock and someone else killed the peacock for it. Uh... All right, so a a catalyst has been triggered. What does that mean? A struggle catalyst has been triggered by Shaikh Roman, inviting a wolf ruler to a feast or hunt activity as honorary guest. Oh no, we work towards stabilization. We fools. And an alliance has uh, expired, of course. So we have less friends now because our brother, uh, or our half brother, he was killed. So let's see now. Why can't we imprison this dude who did that? Mm, we need to find him first, so he should be... No, he isn't here. Where is he? I should have pinned him. Ah, well. We need a new tax collector is, is what, I, what I hear. So let's put in this guy. He's not really great at it, but he'll do for now. I really should have pinned that guy. That would have been a little bit better. So we know who killed our brother so we can take our revenge. Because I can't imprison him. But we're close to claiming our... Lige's throne here. And looking at his power, we're we're getting to equal. We're getting to equal footing here. So that's that's pretty good for us. With a few allies, we might be able to take him. And he does not have his own allies right now. He's actually... Attacking the Caliph in the sponsored conquest of Fars. Not quite sure what that is, but we are in that war as well because we are his vassal, of course. So the Caliph is currently being attacked by our liege, the High Chieftain Sokal, and the Warlord, the High Chieftain Kobayak. So basically some... Some steppe tribes are, are trying to push in here for... What is Fars? Emirate of Fars. Ah, down here. Okay, so that's what we're fighting over, apparently. And we're winning against the, against the Caliphate too, so that's... That's interesting. Our wife is pregnant again, which is very good. Especially since we lost our backup heir right now. Let, let's check our succession, how it looks at the moment. I, um, line of succession, one. So if our boy dies, game is over for us. Literally. That's how it works here. There we go. Soon I will rule Zaidid. So there's a 90% chance of us finishing this proper, winning this. Uh, or we don't do it. And of course, we are going to go ahead and claim our throne. And we laid claim to his title, and he's very sad about that, of course. And we're like, yeah, nothing can stop us now. He will lose a bunch of opinion of us, but we get a pressed claim. Which is very good. What is the difference? So pressed claim, it has this little golden icon right there. That means it will be um, inherited by our successor. So even if we don't manage to take it, it goes down to our boy. So he can try and take it. If it has like a little red... Minus with the shield there, then that means if you don't press it, if you don't try and win it, and if you don't win it in a war, then it's going to be gone, and you can lose it still. So while he's at war, we could press our claim here. So it would be fairly equal, because his quality of troops is actually quite high. So, is uh, not necessarily a clear thing. So what is his... Army comprised of a lot of pike, a lot of bow. The only thing that we really could do against that is push for heavy infantry. Which we have 200 armored footmen already, which is a good counter. But I'm quite sure, and we can do a little bit of a trick here. 
we can find out where he currently is. So if we look at him, he's leading troops down here. So his army is right there. So we know exactly where he is. And he's embroiled in a different fight, in a different war. So we can, we can just kind of jumpstart this. Jump him, attack his capital, hopefully take it. Let's check it out first. So this is a level 3 fort. So not too bad, not too... Not too, too hard, hopefully. But we have no siege weapon here at all. So it's maybe not perfect situation for us. And we're definitely relying on our allies to win this one. Now, we have a lot of prestige, so we will be able to call in all our allies in this war for the crown. Now, chat, what do you think? Should we press it? Should we go on the offensive while he's busy in the south? Fighting for foreigners who somehow pushed him into war against the Caliph. Should we stab him in the back? We can't really do anything else down here at the moment. Like, we can't grow. We could foment some revolts. Can we form into revolt against him? No, there's no negative popular opinion around there. We could challenge him to fight. Um, he would accept. Our prowess is 12. What is his prowess? Let's see, his prowess is 21. So he would absolutely beat us in a, du in a duel. <laughs> Oops. Maybe not. Maybe not duel them. But I think uh, we're gonna try it. Worst thing that can happen is we lose the game. <laughs> so we're gonna move our little flag over to a little bit of a closer place. We know his troops are already gone. So it doesn't matter for us. He's not gonna be able to send troops right there. He'll have to get here first. So we're gonna start our war. He's already in debt as well. So that's pretty good for us. We'll raise all our troops here. And we're gonna call in... Oh, lovely. We can actually call in a dynasty member as well. So let's call in our allies first. Costs us prestige. We'll take it. Costs us very little prestige. We'll take it. Costs us even more or less little prestige. We'll take it. And we could spend... No, actually we can't. Okay, so we called in all of our allies. And we're raising all of our own troops right now. And I finally got that achievement. Not so feudal system for uh, use the claim throne scheme to try and claim the throne of your liege, which I've never actually done before. <laughs> so uh, that's actually quite fun now. Excellent. Our allies are joining, so we can go attack here. Did the stream just drop? I feel like the stream just dropped. Anyhow, so. He'll have to come back north. We don't see his troops anymore because we've lost sight. We don't know exactly where he is. And we know that our allies are quite far away. So we might be in a little bit of trouble there. Let's see. Um, we get some strategical impasse here. We can improve our strategies. We get... We get a bunch that we need for a war. So that's pretty good. We're just gonna go... We could go for... Individual options where someone gets more opinion of us or we just go for everything Where there's no opinion modifiers, but everyone gets improved offense and improved avoidance Which you know right now at the war is uh, probably a pretty pretty solid Situation to have and I think I mean let me check I think We're kind of Stopped are we stopped? No, we're back. Stream dropped for a moment. So now we need to keep a lookout for our enemy appearing. And we need to keep a lookout for our allies, hopefully, arriving some from somewhere. So there's a little bit of an ally. And our enemy has shown his face. And we got a new martial skill. Will it help us? Knight effectiveness, plus 75%. Big, 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 big boost. We'll definitely take this. This is immediately useful for us right now. Uh, sorry, stream. We're back. 
it appears that my connection was a little bit wonky for a moment. But you guys over on YouTube, you just get the recording. You don't see this kind of stuff. You don't get the raw experience. You really should join over on Twitch. Okay, so we're being currently besieged by a hostile army who is fighting our liege lord. So that's bad. And our liege lord is coming. So we might have to abandon our siege. But I think he's gonna attack the enemy first. Okay, that is... That is unexpectedly good for us. He's driving away the enemy who comes to siege my lands. And he's engaging in a fight in the mountains. We have a new daughter, which doesn't help us. But she has a beautiful name. Layla is, Layla is a very beautiful name. So it helps us in insofar that we can go get ourselves a new alliance. And we're going to check here... What alliance would be good? They are pretty strong. Uh, we could go matrilineally. Our marshal, he brings a few men. But that is already like a vassal, so I don't think he's actually gonna come to wars with us. Can't call in your vassals. Your vassals can only kind of join if they want to. Our steward and vassal. Mwah. I don't know. I do want to go matrilineal because we need our bloodline a little bit bigger. So we'll just take... We'll just take any of these who doesn't have a bad trade and who's outside of our realm. Basically. So we'll just go with this guy. It's just a few men. But these can be the difference between winning and losing. I'm switching my commander over, uh, our marshal over to organizing the army so we lose less money. So that's perfect for us. He's sending his troops there to die and fight. So he'll arrive late and weakened. Oh no, our little Layla has become sickly. Oh no. Let's call in our new ally though. Immediately. Let's do that. And two of our allies are arriving now, so it's the smaller ones. But again, 300 soldiers is 300 soldiers. It is a vast difference. So enemy right here, he has weakened himself. And we can just kind of wait for him now. I think he keeps following his the enemy, okay. And we have a son, very good, another son. And he will be called after an ancestor, Quarin. So we can go help our allies here siege this thing down. And he keeps hunting the enemy because this is very, very curious, I must say, right now. I wouldn't have expected this event. So he's following his enemy in the other war and neglecting the defense of his own titles. That is kind of odd. And you cannot bank on this happening. Like This is the weirdest thing. He's literally defending me. So I can achieve victory against him. That is weird. <laughs> and it gave us a lot of time. So all of our allies have since showed up, basically. Or are in the process of doing so. So he's sieging elsewhere. Again, outside of our lands. Okay, this ally here of ours is, is being followed by these guys. So potentially we might lose them. And they might not ever arrive to help us. But it's okay, the 600, almost 700, no, 650, are making their way over to help us. I, that is crazy. That is really, really kind of silly. We're also not losing any sort of supply, which is kind of curious. And I'm not super sure why. Do, do we count as on ally territory? Because he is our liege, actually? Maybe. But we're taking all his stuff right there. So I feel like we should have this one in the bag. Because what he's doing up there has nothing to do with our war. That's just his war. But that is all very curious, I must say. Interesting. Alright, we took that siege. So we just keep sieging, I would say. 
We're even earning money, honestly, with how little we're losing. Okay, now our supplies are going down. Very good. That might only be due to winter. It's no longer going down. Winter is no longer coming. So we have 2,000 troops now between us and our allies. And he's coming with 1,100. And potentially he's going to attack these guys again. So he's going to fight someone else again while we are battering down his gates. So they won the other war. So this enemy is done now. He hasn't got that anymore. So he potentially... Either he's going to attack us, try to re-siege his stuff, or he's going to siege our own things. If he starts sieging our own things, we might abandon this siege and just go take him. Because this is a long siege. The, the defenses here are pretty darn good at fort level 6. That's kind of high. Yeah, okay, he's sieging our stuff. Now the question is, who's going to be faster? And our siege will take at least... 11 month or maximum 11 month and his siege will take three years up to three years so i feel like we can kind of confidently sit here and do our siege while he's chipping away at our fort for possibly three years <laughs> okay so how you get to the siege is you click on the little spear icon that's how you do it that's how you quickly get to the siege all right, so a difference between hostile and enemy army. You can see a slight... I hate how they made it. Uh, good evening, Bjorkli. Level 6 fort is pretty good. It is very good. This early on level 6 fort is quite strong, for sure. We don't have any yet. So something I really don't like about the color scheme here is this light orangey red and this dark red. Like These are the... I can't, I can't zoom in on it, but these are slightly different. So red is our direct enemy. This is who is in the war against us right now. These are who is in a war with the person who we are in a war with. So the enemy over enemy is this. They might, usually they're going to use lose, leave us alone. But if we start trying to go for the same things, then they might attack us as well. So we need to be a little bit careful and avoid these guys. Whereas he needs to do something about them. Either fight them or be fought by them that's really all that he can do and i worry a little bit about the wars that he's fighting there because these are some claims on territory in here so if we win the title these wars might transfer to us because we are then the title holders so we'll have to see how that works out Lots of shield banging happening down here. Lots of bonkety bonk bonk. How are you doing, Bjorkly? How's life? How are your campaigns? You're winning? I'm sure you're doing. Just that. So we're doing okay on the war score. Of course, winning a battle against him would be pretty good for us. Especially since he's leading the army. There's a chance of us capturing him. And we definitely don't want him to lose against them. So if we fight him, defeat his armies, we take away a little bit of a chance of war score for our enemies' enemies. You're a lurker mostly, but you're doing pretty good. Well, I want the lurkers to do pretty good as well. Everyone needs to do good. Lurkers included. YouTube gamers, Twitch gamers, gamers around... The whole flat universe to steal from Beastie Cutie. Everyone needs to do well. So you lurk only on Twitch or do you lurk on, in CK3 too? And do you play or do you just kind of enjoy people playing it? Alright, so this siege here is done. Question is, will our allies come along to defend? Yes, they will. They started on, okay, the next target here to siege would be that. We do need a victory, a military victory. Because that will push our... What do you want? Okay, he wants to blackmail us, get a secret hook on us. Um, okay, the battle is, is kind of going well. Though I'm worried about these guys, what they are going to do. 
Uh, who are you? Are you outside? I don't care if you have a hook on me. Sure, you can have a you can have a hook on me. We got an unpressed claim on the Shaikdom of Ardabil because someone's um, counselor made a political blunder. That's good. It's very good. So the enemy of enemy keeps sieging down this stuff all around here. So we need to make sure that we do that as well. And now we ran into the neutral army. The hostile army. We defeated it. But this doesn't help us in our war. And one of our guys became severely injured. So now we have to go siege some more stuff. And potentially defeat our enemy again. Let's check. How much war contribution did we get? Okay, we haven't gotten the maximum out of fights yet. So we can fight him again. And get up to 50% war score. And we are above 50% from the sieges already. So there's a good chance that if we defeat him again in a battle. Then we will win this war. Before he wins his war. Which is important to us. Because he's fighting to take territory that we are trying to gain here. So hopefully this works out. And there we go, 100%. And we have taken over his title. And, as expected, we have taken over his war. So now what we need to do <laughs> immediately... Uh, first of all, we're gonna ransom this guy here. Because we don't really care that we have him. And now we need to call all our allies in defense on all these wars because we will need all of our allies and if we're lucky by the time we call them they haven't stood down their troops yet so they will be immediately available to us and we can just immediately go fight again okay so they have accepted for some wars, but there are two wars currently going on against us. And I don't know quite exactly which war they joined for, so... Uh, we'll just call them on everything and then we go attack them here. Okay, so now everyone has joined. And hopefully our ally will come along with us. To fight the enemy. Well, we don't want to fight them in the mountains. For sure not. So we're gonna just try and take down the sieges. But if they attack our lands... Then we can go fight them in our lands. And now there is a... Little bit of an issue going on here. There's a strong faction. Okay. You guys all hate me. Okay. They want independence from the liege. Alright. So we have a big problem right now. We have several big problems, honestly. Let's check if we can't find some more allies here. Very good. We have our little son. Extremely great. Let's put him in martial education as well. We see a lot of war happening, so that's probably good. Let's get alliance power as well. Uh, only... Oh! Oh, that's good. 1,000. That's good. That's a horrible match for him because she's 14 years older than him. But that's okay. <laughs> We'll take it. We'll take it. That's 1,000 troops on our side. Immediately. Which we will, of course, also call in. Again, in uh, defensive wars, it's free. It doesn't cost you any prestige to call on your allies. Because everyone understands defense is important. So I don't quite know how far away that dude is. Okay, let's see. They will take five months. We will take three months. So we'll finish our siege and then we go attack them down there. And hopefully, potentially, by then, some of our allies will have it join. Now, these guys are also coming because they're fighting for a different piece of our land. Uh, it's two different wars that we're currently in. We can't white piece out of this one, sadly. Like, I'm happy to go white piece out of one of them. Oh, that's actually... Oh, no, 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 no. That's a problem here. These two are the same. So if they link up, that's a bit of an issue. But our ally is on the horizon. So we're going to finish this siege. And then retreat into our own mountain holdings. Which I hope will work out. Okay, uh, we, have to we have to go toward our ally. So we went toward his smaller army. And he retreated away from us. Because he didn't want that smaller army to be fought alone. And currently he's moving... 
positively for us because he's moving into our mountain territory where we will get the defender advantage even if he reaches the place before we does do. So we'll send all our troops here and we'll defend in the mountains against him. And his army isn't consolidated. So he has a piece here and a piece there. So that worked out beautifully for us. Our ally arrived. His ally didn't or his reinforcements didn't yet. There's the other fool who's fighting a war against us. All right, okay, let's let's go push south now. That is that is going pretty decent right now. I'm not so worried anymore about the faction here. Because between our allies and our own troops, we should be able to fight the the re rebels when they come. Because they are sim pretty weak as they are. Anyway, and our troops currently have super high quality because we have so, so, so many knights here. Okay, we fully defeated one of his armies here. Let's see. Surety of supply. Let's see. Uh, arrange a network of merchants to help me. Well, provision armies for five years. Supply plus 100 and we get some experience, but low chance of that going through. Well, provision armies if we pay for it. If we do not pay for it, our supply capacity goes down for 25%. That's a dangerous choice. That's a big dice roll that we're doing here. Mm, I think we're going to go a range network of... We'll try. We'll, we'll roll the dice. Let's see what happens. And we need a new commander here. And that is us personally, of course. All right. Layla has survived her sickliness. That's lovely. And we got a new perk point here. Never back down. Friendly casualties, minus 20%. Advantage plus 5. And Hasty Luda trade experience. Hasty Luda is a little bit for uh, for tournaments. Doesn't matter too much. By the way, chat and YouTube. I'm, I'm trying to train myself a little bit to use less ums and uhs. So, if my speech pattern is a little bit off tonight, don't worry. I'm not having miniature strokes all the time. I'm just trying to improve my flow of speech so to say when i find the swindler i will have his hand okay so we failed on that event so our armies are now lacking supplies meaning instead of having 100 we only have 75 supply maximum okay so this here this fool with his is that true he has 200 soldiers <laughs> what the hell Okay, that guy is attacking us, but I, we might be able to white piece out of this one very soon. I think we need 22, 23% or something. So half his army of the other guy, we completely defeated because we killed them in the first wave. And the very first attack is where we killed them entirely. Oh, we got a little, another gold shun, a little daughter. Let's see what we can do about her. Oh, yes. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. We're going to marry her to our vassal. Why? Because that immediately kicks him out of the faction. He can't fight us anymore. Or he wasn't in the faction. That prevents him from taking part in the factions. <laughs> I hoped he was one of the factioneers. But okay, he wasn't. Okay, the game suggests us to look into mercenaries. Because our wars have been dragging on a little bit. And the game knows that. The game is a little bit like... Bruh, you need help? I find it insulting. <laughs> okay, so I can go like I have no choice and I will just leave, give them their freedom, but I will not be threatened. The funny thing about this rebellion is all these enemy armies are going to be enemies of these guys as well. So they will likely immediately fight. So this is actually sort of good for us. So we go with I will not be threatened. We will rally the troops. And we're gonna, again, call all our allies into this war. We're getting our money's worth out of these people here. They are being good to us. And that is the power and the importance of having alliances. That is, that is why you need this. In this game. So the enemy armies, the, rebel, uh, the rebellious armies, should be popping up here now. Yep. And if they want to get to us, they have to get through our enemies. 
So, let's see where these fools go. Okay, they just go away. Alright then. So we have taken this, which is now striped. Oh, right, because it's no longer part of our war, actually. This is now part of the other war, <laughs> of the rebellion. Alright, okay, we lost some troops moving in here. That wasn't too smart, I don't think. But this siege here will take a little while longer, 10 months. Ours will be quicker. So the problem right now that happened is that our border... Why, we, why did we lose troops? We lost troops because we no longer had a border directly to this thing here. That was our border. So we were a little bit messed around there. Because the state of this piece here changed a little bit. But he's actually attacking our enemies right now. Like, this is not part of our realm at this very moment. This is part of the rebellion. The rebels have joined together. But there is a good chance that these guys are gonna fight. Which would just be, yes, poetic and lovely for us. Look at them. Look at them go! Not only are they fighting each other, so they're weakening each other. Not only that, but they're also delaying or even ending that siege that was going on there. Okay, someone is trying to kill Hamdam, our courtier. Unacceptable business. Alright, so the rebels, the rebellion won. Let's kick this war. Let's just kick it out. Let's go white peace. It costs us nothing. He loses a bit of prestige and everything, but he stops being a nuisance. Okay. So our allies got a little bit of prestige out of it. For us, it just means one less border to worry about. Okay, so we killed this end here. So we can white piece out of this as well. I don't need to win this war proper. I don't care. This was started before we even, uh, ever began being a, a thing. So we'll just go and deal with our rebels now. We could white piece out of our rebellion as well. But I'd rather fight them. I'd rather win this. Make some example here. And currently they're attacking in the mountains, so again, once we reach their positions, we will defending in the mountains. So that is a very good position for us to be in, especially with all our allies coming in. And he's already fleeing because he can see the writing on the wall. Let me check what is up with my connection. Nothing I can see. Weird. So we're just gonna go siege his stuff. We already took one piece, so he's probably gonna walk over there and take it back. We do need to make sure we're not losing supplies too hard. But that's looking fine. Oh, I like the music. That's pretty cool. So the nice thing about looting this again means another 17 gold in our bank. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna take this back. And it's gonna go quicker than our siege of something completely new. But then he might go attack our capital again, which is in the mountains, so all good. Let's see, a camp dispute. We can deliver a speech about unity to the crowd. Some martial experience, some prestige, or not. <laughs> uh, sod this, I'm going to have some hashish. I think we're gonna go with that. We can lose some prestige, get some stress relief. And I need to take a sip of water. All right, so this is a very funny war so far. Honestly, like almost everything that has happened in this war has been funny to me. Oh, household guard, number of knights, plus four, yes please. Thank you very much. Knights are so, 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 so strong and good. So we're going to force all of our people, especially the ones that hate us. <laughs> uh, this guy, we're going to forbid from being... Uh, he's, he's no good. He's no good. He's just going to die immediately. So now we have 8 out of 13. So we could spend some prestige. 
to find us some new Asvarans. So they will bring us three able-bodied men. The problem is they don't actually join us directly. They will simply be searched for, so we can recruit them. So it costs us some money. So I don't know if I actually want to do that. Let's check through our courtiers again. Uh, not our vassals, no, no. Our courtiers. Let's check if we have someone who's not yet married. Or who doesn't have yet children. Oh, we ah, we have another source. We have prisoners, of course. So we can just negotiate his release. Demand conversion and recruit him. So he's now part of our court. And he will fight for us. And they're both pretty decent. So we'll negotiate release, demand conversion and recruit. They're gonna hate us some. But that doesn't matter much to us. <laughs> uh, because they are just gonna go fight in our war as our soldiers. So he's right there. And he's our rival, actually. So, let's go ahead and find him a spouse, shall we? I'm good to you. I'm giving you a wife. I'm gonna give you someone who's possessed. <laughs> Just because I think it's funny. Alright, and this guy is joining our court as well. So, he should pop up right there. And you get a wife too. Isn't that great? And you get... Oh, let's not, not, let's, let's not be too mean here. You get this one. I just went by age there. That's, that's all. That's the whole consideration. So our enemy is getting a little bit stronger now. He made some, some recruitment drive here. And we can do the same. There might be a few of our soldiers, especially the newly raised knights that aren't there yet. So you can see this army has three knights that we just created. So we raise them and we can add them to our army, making us quite a bit stronger. Let's check if we can have accolades. Oh, good stuff. Another sun. A good little sore cub. And another fighter for the realm. And we'll find you a spouse, shall we? We need another alliance. <laughs> uh, let's see. 96, 94. Okay, this is nothing. Okay, we, we will wait then. That doesn't really matter then. Alright, we took this. Very good. We're at 83% win. This will go down now because he's going to take that back. We might just keep sieging here. He'll likely come to us. Oh, this here is going up quickly on, on stabilization. Interesting. So where is he going? Is he going to attack us? Is he going to siege our stuff? If he's going to siege our stuff, I don't I don't worry. That's actually pretty good for us. And another sun. Look at that. More martial. Everyone will fight in this family. Everyone will fight. The alliance power is still kind of horrible. It's all internal. So I'd rather wait with marrying them off because we might make some internal alliances. Decision available. Find a new faith for Persia. Okay. Ah. Oh. Imamism. Uh, we will bend to the will of the Sunni Caliph no longer. The Shia Imam faith will show us the way. All right. Alevi. Nizarism. I don't know if I want to do that. We're going to ignore that for the moment because that's a little bit far reaching in terms of what that does for us or against us. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of sit here, do our war as it is, and fight our enemy in our own lands. So I'm not quite sure why this is an equal battle. Oh, he's bringing even more soldiers. Where is he getting them? Let's go fight them there. We don't want them to combine. We want to destroy this little army, ideally. Okay, so this army was fully destroyed. I would like to attack now, please. Thanks. Can I? 
It's a very difficult place to reach. <laughs> okay, so this is equal. Because it's not counting our allies just yet. Okay, now he sees the writing on the wall and he's running. But we might be able to reach him. As long as we can reach him in our mountains is good. Though some of our allies are going weird ways. I don't like that. A call to war. Um, we're gonna join, sure. So one of our allies is not coming with us. Which is a problem. But the enemy runs, so... Maybe not so much of a problem. Okay, we're gonna get... Part of his army here. Which is good. That's good enough. Even if we just crush part of the army. That's decent for us. Because we're actually pretty high on this. And we're pretty high on this for example. So if we get to 50 war score. 50% war score from the battles. This rebellion is crushed. Okay, wasn't a win yet. Okay, we're not gonna get a battle there, but we're gonna get a battle here. So we can catch them there. And destroy that army. So we managed to split this army. And defeat the individual pieces. And we're at 96%. Because there is a reason why we can do that at 96%. Exactly. We have stalwart culture. So in defensive wars, we need 10 less war score to get an acceptance on the enforced amount. So perfect for us. Right there. Done with this. Know your place. So we have crushed these people here. And our ally is sadly being completely destroyed. And we will not be able to reach him. I don't even know where to go for this. Where is this war? <laughs> what, down here? I will never reach that, ever. So these guys sent their troops here to help us. And lost their home over it. <laughs> Basically what happened. Alright, let's disband our armies. Without an alliance, I cannot help but notice that nepotism you treat your vassal valley with my leash. My spy announced a concession from you would soothe my temper. Say, instructions in fighting. I will speak well of you. Then let us fight, I'll teach you. Busy tutoring will decrease our diplomacy. Um, he will get no such thing. Okay, we'll teach him to fight. And our rival is Skanda dies. Oh darn, what a shame. Okay, there's a lot of things now that we can take care of and we should take care of. A lot of stuff going on. And first of all, we have too few knights. But I think we already force everyone that is even halfway worthy. We could recruit this guy, but 50 gold is way, way, way too much money. So definitely not happening. We'll just have to wait. Uh, next thing, let's let's check our battles, like the last ones, what our knights did, maybe. Yeah, our knights killed a lot of people. Very good. Well done. Okay. We need to replenish our troops for sure, so we're gonna put this down here. To train commanders, or leave it at re levy reinforcement rate. I think we'll leave it at levy reinforcement rate for a little while longer to have this re replenished quicker. So our armies are stronger again quicker. One of our powerful vassals would like to have a council position, but it's fine. He's betrothed to our daughter, so we are allied. He's not going to do nothing to us. Um, let's see. Okay, so our main first objecti objective in playing a new campaign has now been achieved. We have become a duke through the claim 
our liege's title action. And we are now an independent realm, an independent ruler. Kind of wedged between a whole lot of big countries. <laughs> so the Abbasid Empire, it has fallen apart a little bit. It is now the Safarid and the Abbasid Empire. And we are kind of in the middle here. So that's something to take into account. There's a lot of things to take care of here. Um, become Caliphal supporter, for example, or find a new faith. All that kind of stuff. We're going to take a look at in the next episode over on YouTube. So if you're watching over on YouTube, thank you very much. Leave a like, subscribe, and follow over on the Twitch as well. Because we're going to be live there. And for those of you watching on Twitch, we'll keep going. But I'm going to stop the YouTube recording now. Let's keep going over on Twitch.